You might want to get started with Leathercraft, follow along and you'll learn the basics and you can start making your own stuff. So let's dive in. So the first thing we need is some kind of plan of what we're actually making. I want to make a case for my laptop, so that's what I'm going to do. And there are basically two routes to go here. Either we draw it up in the computer and print it and use that as a template, which is what I've done. Or we could place our item on top of a piece of paper, trace around it and then add for seam and trim allowance and also for the height of the item. If you want to use my pattern, there's a link down in the description. And if you want to skip the step of making your own pattern, there are tons of pattern online as well. All right, so now we have our pattern. Let's take a look at the leather I'm using. So I'm using this two millimeter leather that is kind of cognac colored. I think two millimeters is pretty good for a laptop case because I don't want it too floppy or sloppy. Sloppy? <laughs> I don't want it too sloppy. I want a rigid laptop case. But you could go thicker or thinner, it's your choice. You choose. To cut the leather out, I find the easiest way is to place the template on top of the leather and then tape it with some painter's tape so that it stays still. And then to cut the leather, you just need something sharp. I'm using a roller knife here. And for some of the rounded corners, I'm using an X-Acto knife. The key is to go slow and make sure you follow the line. And for all the straight lines, I'm just using a steel ruler. And when cutting around corners, I do multiple passes. That way I ensure to get a good round over. Okay, so the pieces are cut. We now have two pieces that will make up the laptop case. But we also need to figure out how this thing closes. And I have these bag clasps that I'm going to use. But you could also use magnet ones or anything really to close the case. Now these bag clasps are two-parted and that means one goes onto the case and one on the lid. And the bottom one attaches with some steel pins that are bent on the other side. And I don't want those metal pins scratching the laptop every time we put it down. So we need to make an extra piece of leather to put on top of the bottom of the case. Now we want to attach that little piece before we sew the entire case together. And to do leather stitching, we need to make holes in the pieces before we can start stitching. And this could be made a couple of different ways. Either we use a tool designed for it, there are multiple different types of forks for punching holes, and they come in different sizes and shapes. But you could also use a hole punch, uh, even though it would take a lot more time, of course. Another way is just actually using a fork. It's a bit harder, but it does work. I've used it in the past. So to be able to punch those holes in a straight line, we're going to make some stitching lines first. And for this, I use a wing divider and I set it to around four millimeters, usually for stitching. And then I trace around my piece and then I can punch the stitching holes. But before we punch the holes, there's actually one thing we need to do to the leather and that is burnish the edges. Burnishing the edges basically gives the leather a nice edge instead of that frayed leather edge. We burnish with friction basically. 
I like to paint the edges before I burnish them and I have this empty pump marker thingy where I put some leather dye into and that is perfect to dye the edges before we burnish them. I apply tokenol to the edges before I burnish them and then I use an edge burner to create the friction between the leather. And before we burnish the leather, we want to create a round over on the edges of the leather and for that we use an edge beveler. There are different sizes of edge bevelers and if there's one thing you want to get with the quality, it's definitely an edge beveler and maybe also the, the stitching hole punches. I'm adding double-sided tape to the extra piece and that is just so that it stays in place while I'm sewing. Now sewing leather is a video in itself, but basically you have two needles and one thread. You start by threading one end through until you have equally long lengths on both sides. And then you go through one hole with one end of the needle and then you take the other needle and thread that through the same hole without piercing the first thread. And then you keep going until you reach the end. And I usually go back two holes before I cut the thread off. Okay, so it's time to attach the two big pieces together and I like to glue them together. I'm using a leather glue that I have, but you can also use contact cement. It's really hard attaching two pieces together perfectly, so I usually add some trim allowance to my patterns, which I've done in this case as well. So we're actually going to cut off the edges of the leather. The amount of trim allowance is marked in the pattern. And when cutting off the edges like this, we get perfectly crisp edges. And now we can repeat the previous steps, which we did with the little piece by beveling the edges, marking the stitching line, punching the holes and stitching everything together. 
Now all that's left to do is to add the clasp to the lid as well. I have a laser engraver, so I use that to engrave the Swedish Maker on top of the lid of the case. And I also engraved a dead skull in the, on the inside of the case just for fun. And then I like to finish off my leather with some leather wax. So now we're finished. I'm, I'm really happy with this laptop case. Uh, if you want to get this, like I said, there's a link down in the description. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.